I, mean, I was at the Bombay protests yesterday yeah. against uh, the Citizenship Amendment Act and it was mainly led by students and it was yeah. really inspiring yeah. and you have as an academic you have all of these moments of serious doubt is this what i should be doing right. should i not be an activist you know if you have that kind of uh, desire um, but right now i feel like i feel really proud to be an academic because yeah. i feel like this is a space where we really are engaging with uh, younger minds with this generation that feels that it's been handed uh, a, a terrible kind of deal um, yeah. by older conservative people right. and so it is a place for kind of deep thinking and mm -hmm. students have always been at the forefront of resisting the status quo so I think we are getting that energy back uh -huh. in where you know you don't just go to university or a college just to become wealthy and prosperous right. so for me the classroom is very much a space of activism yeah it's not kind of oh you will learn to do formal analysis uh, or read Gramsci uh, or unpack Amitabh Bachchan's star text, but then you just go off and kind of get your grade and walk into the world and go on to make money, right? right. And just check off all of the milestones in your life. Okay. Uh, it's really about thinking about relationality. What is our class, caste positioning, gender positioning, sexuality positioning? How can we build networks that are relational? How can we realize that we cannot do things alone and we need mm -hmm. to build dialogue with others? in our current political climate, not just in India, but, but across the world, I feel like it's become the space mm -hmm. for really kind of going back and thinking about what are our foundational morals and tenets as, mm -hmm. as a society, as individuals, um, and that education has a central role to play, to not mm -hmm. kind of jump to easy understandings of the world, mm -hmm. to not assume that we can make, we can change the world in some kind of immediate way, the importance of contemplation, of quietness, of thinking, of not reacting immediately, of feeling like, you know, a, a, an in-depth study or something needs to happen before you jump to action. Those are things we could do well with right now. We don't mm. eternally have to think about Hollywood as the biggest, India as the kind of the one who's always aspiring to be like right. the Indian film industry and then Trinidad as this small in comparison to the Indian film industry. Rather, I want to think about how these spectators in Trinidad through their embodied practices, so, you know, they would take these songs and they would mash them up with Afro-Caribbean rhythms yeah. and produce really interesting chutney uh, music, etc. How did that come back to India and impact the Bombay film industry? Because by tracing these, we can tell a story that links the Caribbean, Africa, and uh, mm -hmm. South Asia in very interesting ways. And I showed it in uh, the same Indian cinema class in Trinidad, and my students said, wait, just hold up. That title song, we have heard it. And then we kind of unearthed the fact that the song had actually been recorded in 1974. It's called Om Shanti Om by a Trinidadian soca singer called Lord Shorty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and he had composed it, uh, look it up online, it's really delightful. Mm -hmm. um, he had composed it, uh, he, lived, he grew up in an Indo-Caribbean village, so it was majority uh, people of Indian origin, He's a, he was of African origin. Right. He would hear their bhajans in the temple. Oh. And so he picked up the tune from there and then I don't know how it comes to Bombay, but it features in a 1980 film Cubs, mm. which had mm. music by Bappi Lenny. Right. And I'm really interested in knowing where Bappi Lenny was getting all of right. these sources from. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, nobody in India ever credited the original Trinidadian right. musician. Right. Um, so there we have the politics of the big mm. and the small, right? That right. you can plagiarize or appropriate. You mentioned um, a modern Hindi film that borrows mm -hmm. from um, an, Af an African sauce in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. which in turn is taken from a religious sauce yeah. that is originally Indian. Mm -hmm. But then it doesn't stop there either because the form of bhajans, etc., was contributed, especially by the time of the 1800s, was, I mean, that changed a lot because right. of interactions with other religious Absolutely. communities who were yeah. also singing and mm -hmm. performing, such as Sufi etc., yeah. yeah. in the subcontinent. Thanks for checking out Artist Story with PK. My name is Paritosh, and I created this channel in order to share content with you on the cultural past of India and our world. If you like what you see, please go ahead and share, subscribe, and check out my other social media profiles. And if you have any comments on the content I create, any questions, please go ahead and reach out to me.